privilege it is to be in the Lord's presence, and I pray that we never treat this as common. But tonight we have uh, also another privilege of a mother in the faith opening us up in prayer. So if you guys want to direct your attention to the screen. I'm here uh, with my spiritual amazing sons and daughters in the faith. They are a team that works with Ministry of Mercy. And we just bless you, Jessica, and we bless you, Michael. And we just have this scripture on our heart for you today. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is a picture of the Beatitudes. He shows us what he's like through the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. And in this team, many of you have lost family members. You've had people in your family close to you, decapitated in pain, but the Lord is healing us. And we feel like as we're here, bringing just an impartation of mercy and compassion on you, that what we've been through is gonna encourage you to never ever give up, to stay strong in the faith. Blessed are you who mourn, for you shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And we just want to bless you right now. Um, and we just extend our hands. And, and as a little mama in the faith, I just want to bless you with these beautiful spiritual sons and daughters. Lord God, just fill them, Lord, all of them in Jesus' image, through Michael and Jessica, with your love and your blessing and your power and your glory, Lord. God, I just pray that they would be encouraged as these beautiful lovers of Jesus just stretch their hands and, and pray for them, God. We thank you, Jesus, for everyone who we love. They are shatarabase. Thank you for mercy, Lord, and compassion, Lord, and hunger, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen.
thanking the Lord right now. Start thanking the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for saving us, Jesus. Come on, just lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice.
high and lift it up. Keep singing. See your bridegroom high and lift it up. Seated at the right hand of the Father. He wants us to go deeper tonight. All your attention, every eye closed. Lift your hands to heaven. All your attention on Jesus. Sing it straight to him. Sing in the spirit all over the room. Sing in the spirit all over the room. Sing in the spirit. Yeah, lift your voice.
get lost, forget about everything. Come into his presence. Come into his presence.
lift your hands to the Lord. Just look up, look up with your actual face. Just bask in his presence. 
look heavenward. Lord, tonight we look up from where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help cometh from above. Lord, I pray for a Holy Spirit meeting tonight. As we bask in the rays of your presence, healing rays, arise tonight with healing wings, O Son of Righteousness. Arise with healing in your wings. We love you. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you. I love you. I want to love you more. I, I don't know who else loves you here. But I love you. I love everything about you. I declare that you are altogether lovely. That there is nothing wrong with you. You are perfect and glorious and loving safe and perfect and holy you're light you are joy you are peace your life I love you Lord I love you I just feel like he wants to hear that from you personally oh Jesus I love you I love you I love you I love you fairest of 10,000, bright and morning star, you will split the heavens and come for your bride with fire in your eyes. Your wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord, make this place like heaven. Let this room be like heaven on earth. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Replace worry tonight with delight. With delight. Holy. Holy, holy. I just want you to take about the next minute and close your eyes and just love him the way you do. Just love him. You and your homes. Lose your dignity. I mean, my word, you're in your house, so get on the floor if you have to. Get on your knees. Lose it all. Just lavishly love Jesus tonight, all of us. Let's lavishly do that. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Full of glory, full of light. Release your anointing, Lord. A wonderful anointing. You are holy. You are holy. All eyes on Jesus. All eyes on Jesus. Every musician, every camera operator, every usher, all eyes on Jesus right now. Fairest of 10,000. Clothed in light. We love you. How we love you. Be loved here. Be loved here like nowhere else on earth. Be loved right here. Keep us as the apple of your eye. That's our prayer. Be loved here. Now, Lord, I pray that your name would be greatly glorified tonight and that none of us would leave the same that we'd all leave under the influence of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Destroy everyone who thinks they know what, I should say, not everyone. <laughs> Destroy every thought that assumes that we know what's going to happen. 
Lord, we refuse to leave the same. Tonight we come to the wonder worker of Galilee who dwells in unapproachable light. Touch us. Come on, lift your hands. You've got to make it personal. Touch us. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. You tell him. Say, Jesus, touch me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father, every person who is meant to respond to the gospel tonight, let your authority reign in this room. I plead the blood over my message, your message, your gospel, and over every heart and mind in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift your, lift your hands to heaven one more time and just tell Jesus what he means to you. Come on. Tell Jesus what he means to you. Come on, tell him. You are wonderful. You're kind. You saved me. You loved me. Tell him, tell him. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you take your seats quickly in the presence of the Lord? I want to, this is a very, very heavy anointing tonight, a very strong presence. No one moving around unless it's an emergency. I want you to grab your seats very quickly. And I need your attention here for 10 minutes. Babe, may I have my Bible, please? Worship team, I love you. And Jesus loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We need to take our hands off the wheel every day. Every day. Tonight we are walking on holy ground. Something broke last week and I refuse to lose it. It's the reason I'm alive. I can't move on with church as usual when Jesus comes. Dom, lift your hands to the Lord. Babe, would you go over there? Everyone grab a seat. Father, I thank you for this champion, this treasure. I pray that your power would fall on her shake her in her innermost being. That this holy otherness, which is actually holiness, that you'd grab her in a deeper place. Uh, if Austin's around, he needs to run in here. Someone needs to grab him. I'm sure he's watching. You need to get in here, Austin. Lord, I want everyone to stretch their hands towards Dom. Thank you for this walking sacrifice, this living sacrifice. Now give her more tonight, more. Make her more offensive to the religious mind, more offensive, more confusing to the balanced. Sit there, Ross. You need to move the communion. Now, Father, clothe Dom with tangible garments tonight. As Joseph wore a coat of many colors, increase the favor on her. 
Make her an example and a beacon. Come upon her tonight in power. The fire of the love of Jesus. The fire of the love of Jesus. Come upon Austin and their children. Everyone just pray in the Spirit softly, softly, softly. Come upon them both. I pray that your power that I feel flowing through me right now would be tangibly known in their lives. Receive it by faith right now. Like hungry children, receive it by faith. There is more. There is more. I promise you there's more. We've just dipped our feet in. We're ankle deep in the river of God. He hasn't even gotten started yet. Be clothed in robes and garments of favor. The power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Heaven thanks you, Dom, for turning people, turning a generation to Jesus. And we honor you and love you. I want all of you to listen very closely for, for the next 10 minutes. I feel Jesus in the room. Close your eyes for a moment, would you please? And say this out loud. Jesus, once, say it out loud, once, all of me. Say it again. Jesus wants all of me. One more time. Jesus wants all of me. The Bible says in Luke 18... Verse 18, that a certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The Holy Spirit, have dominion right now over every soul. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And so Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, who then can be saved? But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Number one, Jesus tells the rich young ruler, why do you call me good? Only God is good. This speaks of two things. Number one, Jesus is saying, if you're going to call me good, you better call me God. He was not relinquishing deity. He was basically saying there is one good and you're looking at him. Number two, it shows the heart of Jesus to point to his Father. But I want you to notice that Jesus targets the one thing 
that had not been given over to the Lord. He said, well, how do you receive eternal life? Well, keep the commandments, which is actually impossible. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Jesus goes to this one thing, this hidden uh, treasure, so to speak, that we tend to think Jesus can't see. But Jesus is the master revealer, and he knows how to put, on, put his finger on the one thing we keep from him. Say this, Jesus sees all. Jesus wants all of me. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office and said to him, follow me. So he, Matthew, arose and followed him. Jesus walks by Matthew's place of business. He looks Matthew in the eye. He says, follow me. Matthew leaves all and follows Jesus. Additionally, Jesus finds Peter at his workplace as a fisherman on the shore of Galilee. He tells them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. All three instances, in fact, in every instance, where somebody becomes a disciple, they are asked, listen carefully, to leave all to follow Jesus. I've said this before, if Jess on our marriage, on our wedding day, if I whispered in her ear just before the vows, I said, look, babe, I just want you to know I'm really excited to marry you. I love you 97%. She would say, well, where's the other three? Like any good spouse. So Jesus tonight is targeting hearts. I feel it in my spirit. I felt it earlier while I was down here. He wants all. He wants all. He, he wants a true marriage. He wants everything, listen, that you think, <laughs> this is comical, that you think he doesn't know about. He sees all, wants all, and knows all. The greatest spiritual warrior is not the one who attends the most conferences and fasts the most. It's the one who has given the most of themselves away. That's a difficult assignment for the devil. He doesn't know what to do with people who've given all. And that is true discipleship. Jesus said, if any man, listen carefully, if any man wants to come after me, let him first deny himself. So self-denial is Entry-level Christianity. Let him first deny himself. He denies his dreams or her dreams. They deny their future plans. They deny their bondages. They deny everything they want to hold on to. You deny self at the core. And then Jesus said, step two is to take up your cross. Once you've taken up your cross... Now you're wearing the right uniform, the uniform of wood. And so now you qualify to follow the one who leads you carrying his own cross. You see, we wear our own garments and think we can join the procession. No, 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 no. We must wear the garments of our bridegroom who wears a garment of wood. This cross says one thing. Are you ready? D death. This is not inspirational. 
Of course, there's a measure of inspiration here. Most people wear a cross around their neck and for many reasons. Maybe it speaks of your culture or how you were raised or maybe you think it looks good or it helps your outfit a bit more. Friends, you have no idea what you're wearing. You are wearing a symbol that says this, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You are wearing a symbol that says, I am a walking dead man. I am a walking dead woman. I have given my life to the one who still bears wounds today, and he lives through me. Nevertheless, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. Jesus wants all tonight, all. And you know, as you're sitting there, doesn't matter if you're here tonight. Listen, this, coming to this service, we're glad you came. But this does not secure your eternal destiny. No, of course not. You may have Christian friends and not be a Christian. Every head bowed and eye closed. Every head bowed. Children, hear me well. You say, I don't have much to give him. You are worth, listen, you are worth Listen very carefully. Jesus shed his blood to pay for your soul, kids. You're worth much more than you think. If you haven't given all, you know you need to give all and truly deny yourself and follow Jesus the rest of your life 100%. Nothing held back. I want you to lift your hand right here in this room. Kids, you too. If, I'm, if you feel me speaking to you, I want you to keep your hands up if you've lifted them. Don't be embarrassed. Jesus, listen, Jesus said if you, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. I want everyone to stand, please. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, listen carefully before you come down. If you brought someone here that you know needs Jesus, so you're not sure if they're fault. You Come on, good friends know this. You know if they're living a true Christian life, a life completely sold out. I want you to look them in the eye and say, you need to get down there and you know it, and I'm going with you. Come on. If you raise your hand or you wish you did, children, if you want to come down, tell your mom and dad, I want to come give my life to the Lord. We have seen dozens and dozens of children saved in the last few weeks. I want you to come down. If, if I'm speaking to any of you, you come down right now and give your heart to Jesus. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Come. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Give your life to Jesus. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter what people think. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Oh, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. You Come on. Look at these little children. Come give your life to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Listen, listen, I feel this. Many of you are addicted. Many of you are bound. Some of you are addicted to lust. You can be free tonight. I don't care what you're addicted to. You may be addicted to pornography. I don't know what it is, but the Lord knows. Come and give it to Jesus. You do not have to live under condemnation. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. They're still coming. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Setting young people free. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. It's time to get real with the Lord. It's time to get raw. Come, come give your life to the Lord. Come give your life to the Lord Jesus. Still coming. You do not have to live under that heavy yoke of condemnation, of self-hatred, of wondering whether or not God loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, come on. Hey, celebrate. It's still coming. Thank you, Lord. 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 Nothing is more exhausting than living a fake Christian life. Nothing, nothing. Come get free tonight. Come get free tonight, young and old. Come get free tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. 
little kids coming to give their hearts to the Lord. Ah, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, Jesus is wonderful. Oh, Jesus is. I know there, you know, I've never done this before, but I know there's more. I know there are more hiding. I'm not embarrassed to go after you. Because that's the heart of the Lord. He leaves the 99 for the one. That's what he does. You come. Come give your life to the Lord. You come give your life to the Lord. Come give your life to Jesus. Come get free tonight. Come get free tonight. Some of you are a slave to your members, your, your body. You can't control your own body, yet you want God to use you to change the world. Jesus, listen, Jesus wants you to reign in life, a slave to no one but him. And I'm going to begin praying, and when I do, if you feel the Lord, the Holy Spirit coming upon you, and you feel like, I need to get down there. As I say every week, you will not interrupt me. Come to the cross of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to be found underneath the cross in its glorious shadow. Underneath the horns of the altar where the enemy cannot kill me, where my sins are no more, where the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. Come, come give your life to the Lord. Come, come. Come, come. Come, come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a loving Lord. What a loving Lord. What a loving Lord. You know, I just feel to say this. You know you're tired. I'm speaking to some of you right now. You know you're tired. You're weary and heavy laden. You're trying to live this thing in your own strength. And Jesus never asked for that. He said, come unto me if you're weary, if you're tired, if you're heavy laden, if you're carrying your own bondage of sin, the, the weight of the world on you. You were never meant to carry the weight of the world. Jesus said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Come, come to Jesus. That's right. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Babe. Every hand lifted to heaven. For those of you who come forward, I want you to look me in the eye if you can, unless you're under the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to look me in the eye. Everything changes tonight. A divine exchange is going to take place. You for him, him for you. Tonight you're going to repent of your sin completely and turn to the Lord Jesus. That's called repentance. I turn away from my sin, Satan and the world, and I put my trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And that's what's going to happen tonight. And when that happens, every sin you ever committed will be gone forever. I said forever. That's good news, church. That's good news. That's amazing news. It's the best news. And he will take your sin and give you his righteousness. And no longer, I'm proud of you, Colby. I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. No longer will you carry your stain. You'll carry his white garment. Are you ready to give all to Jesus, everyone who's come forward? Would you stretch your hands towards them? Everyone who's come forward, just lift your hands to heaven. 
as you offer your life. Say this out loud, the whole church. You ready? Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight having sinned against you and I'm sorry. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you shed your blood to take away my sin and the sins of the world. And I believe that you were buried and that you were raised again from the dead. And I believe that you are God Almighty. Jesus, you ascended to the right hand of the Father where you are seated as King of kings and Lord of lords. And I believe that you are coming back again to take me home and rule and reign forever. Tonight, I give you my life, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and save my soul. Oh, say that again. And save my soul. Me for you. You for me. I renounce the world. I renounce the devil. And I renounce my own will. You are the Lord and Savior of my life forever. I am born again. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we can't praise you enough for this moment. We can't praise you enough for this moment. Heaven, heaven will tell of the magnitude of these moments. Help us see these moments as you do, Lord. Help us see these moments as you do. Everyone who came forward, would you please look me in the eye, in my baby blue eyes. They're not. They're not. Number one, there's a few things you need to do to live a true victorious Christian life. Listen to me. The devil has been destroyed in your life. You can live in victory. Number one, you need to get a Bible. If you don't have one, we'll help you get one. In just a, a moment, we'll point you in the right direction. Number two, you need, or I should say number one, read your Bible every day. Every single day. Read the Bible. You say how much until you're really full. And then read it again. <laughs> Number two, spend time in prayer. You say, I don't know how to pray. He will teach you. You know how to talk to people. Begin by talking to the Lord. Okay? Number three. Number three. You need to be baptized in water. The reason many people do not walk in victory it's because they never go into the waters of baptism. So the old man is stuck to them. The diseased old man, sooner or later that disease gets into the new man. And some of the old ways come back. You need to go into the water, to that holy scalpel, and be circumcised in the waters and come out in newness of life, beaming, beaming with the, full, with the filling of the Holy Spirit. All right. We can help you get baptized in water. We do it at least every month, I think. And we'd love to do that for you. Number four, you need to be part of a local church. We would love for you to join this church. We meet at 10 a.m. in Maitland at the Sheraton on Sunday mornings. And obviously we meet here at 6 p.m. If you don't feel led to join this church, find a church and do not attend. Do not settle for mere attendance. Become a part of the life of the body of Christ. Plug your heart in to what God is doing there. You need to find a church that loves the Lord's presence and the whole Bible. I want to tell you very clearly, do not attend a church that doesn't believe the whole Bible. 
Do not do that. Find a church that even believes what they don't understand. Okay? It's probably healthy not to follow people who think they completely understand God. That just makes him our size, and that doesn't sound like uh, the kind of Lord we want to follow. Okay, lastly, Jesus promised to empower you with his spirit, the same spirit that he was empowered with and still is clothed in. And that's the Holy Spirit who gave him the power to do all he did on earth. And Jesus said, you simply ask. So I'm going to come into agreement with you tonight and ask the Lord, and his timing is perfect. Some of you, it might happen right now. To some of you, it probably is happening right now. Some of you might happen tonight. Could be while you're sleeping. Maybe tomorrow while you're driving to, to work. Or I don't know. But I want to come into agreement. And once I do, it's too late. It's too late. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Father, you said that we were to ask you. Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit and fire. Clothe and empower these new, new children. These wonderful, born-again children. Clothe them with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. I'd like all of you to stand up, please. All of you stand up. Now, all of you children, listen. God radically changed my life at 12, my brother when he was 9. What I'm praying over you in my heart is that your fire would provoke your parents to go deeper in God. I pray they'd become jealous of your pursuit. That is possible, and I've seen it. I want you to provoke your parents to walk with Jesus. All right? Read your Bible until they don't know what to do with you. I read the entire New Testament in one week when I got born again at 12. I started with the book of Revelation, probably not the best place to start, <laughs> but it worked, and I certainly received the revelation of the fear of the Lord. <laughs> it, was, it was quite amazing. Children, I believe God's going to use you to set your whole family on fire. <laughs> listen, listen, the Bible says, the Bible says that this belongs to you in the last days, dreams and visions, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. May God speak to you all, okay? Turn, everybody turn around and look that way if you've come forward. Look at John Reed here. He loves this part. John, raise your hand. This is John Reed. Now listen very carefully. Outside that door, that exit sign, is a new believer's table. All of you are going to meet John there afterward because you're born again. And you can't lie right now. It's too early. So you're going to meet John outside that door and John is going to make sure that you have the opportunity to do everything I talked about that you have a bible that you get that you become part of the baptismal track that you are equipped and that you live a victorious christian life and you can so i need all of you to look at me and say i will do that i will do that. i do not want you jesus did not say make converts he said make disciples and so we need your help with that so meet john after service right outside that door you will see him at the table. I want all of you to lift a praise to the Lord for all he's done. Come on. Come on. Do that. Come on. You may go back to your seats. Let's welcome them home. Welcome them home. Come on. Come on. Welcome them home. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Welcome them home. Thank you, Jesus. If you're, watching, if you're watching online and you gave your heart to Jesus, I'm sure thousands of you did, I want you to text more Jesus to that number and we will stand with you and walk with you. Congratulations. You'll never be the same. Raul, would you please come up? Let's welcome Raul to the platform. You can be seated. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're about to receive, or rather, give generously um, onto the Lord and to the kingdom. And I just, I quickly wanted to share um, just a small and brief little concept. I, I know our Jesus school students are hopefully very aware of what generosity and um, relationship in relationship with the Lord looks like.
See, when scripture says God loves a cheerful giver, cheerfulness isn't caused because we're gonna receive tenfold or a hundredfold or whatever. God loves a cheerful giver because there was not a single time that he gave and he wasn't cheerful. Wow. See, we were created in his image to look like him, to manifest him, to represent him. And so to look to look that to look like him, to represent him well, to manifest Jesus wherever we go, including, you know, including in our finances, it looks like giving cheerfully, not because we're expecting to receive back or because, I don't know, for any other reason. It's because it's in that place in a cheerful giver is when we look like Jesus. Does that make sense? See, scripture says, in Romans 5, 2, it says, we have access, we, by faith, we have access into this grace in which we now stand. And James uh, 2, I think it's like 220 or 223, somewhere in there, it says that Abraham, James was talking about Abraham and faith, and he said that Abraham made his faith complete by what he did. See, without action, faith is incomplete. It's a belief system. And belief systems, belief systems don't produce fruit. If, they don't, if a belief system doesn't become faith, oftentimes actually what it produces is... is maybe frustration or even judgment because somebody's not doing something according to what you believe. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is what scripture teaches that when you step out in faith, when your belief system becomes faith via action, you access grace that enables whatever it is you're believing for or trusting the Lord to do to come to pass. I think a great example is, is in healing. Like you can believe God heals to your blue in the face, but until you step out and you pray for somebody, it's not faith, it's a belief system. In a very, very similar man manner when it comes to generosity and to tithing, I honestly, if, or I'll say this in the most kind, loving way, is that tithing is not generosity. Tithing is obedience. Yeah. See, we, we, I, think, I think at least I grew up this way or I saw it like this for a very long time. I thought like, oh, well, the Lord wants me to give so that money doesn't have my heart. And it's like, that's, there, there's, there's an element of truth there, but that's not why he, he tells us to tithe and tells us to give. It comes back again to his nature. It's who he is and he wants us to look just like him. And so when there's a command to give, it's not, it's not like a, it's not a, teach you a lesson tactic. It's not like, oh, you know what? Because trust me, I've been in a place where I had no money and it's like, I, you know, money had no, it had none in my heart because I had none of it. And so it's like, <laughs> it's like, I don't even need a tithe. If that, if that was the purpose for tithing or giving, I would not need to do it because I, there's nothing to have my heart. But see, you, we give not because not because we're trying to teach ourselves to be structured or proper or whatever it is, we give because we wanna reflect the very nature of the Lord. And so when you give in faith, this is, I, I, this is what I wanna encourage you as we give today, is that when you text or when you put your offering in the bucket, that today that there would be a, a conscious thought that says, I'm giving this in faith. And God will always, always pour out grace. It says that we have access to grace through faith. So when you give in faith, there's grace that enables 
people to get saved, to equip missionaries all over the world, feed the hungry, the broken, the hurting, all of it. So when we give, especially as a church, let's be an extremely generous church, not because we have to, and not because we're just obedient, but because we wanna look just like Jesus. Does that make sense? All right. Oh man. So um, as we give today, we have, uh, there's gonna be buckets up here. Uh, please, you can also use the, uh, the number on your screen and um, just give in faith, really give in faith so, so that the Lord, the Lord puts a grace on the seed that How we're sowing. How many of you do not have an envelope and you need one? You can stay up here with me, Ro, we're gonna pray. How many of you need an envelope? I do. If I may have one, please. This is wonderful and uh, of the Lord. All right. If you're watching online, there is a number on your screen. Please uh, be faithful with your giving. If this ministry has blessed you, I pray it has. And uh, I want to encourage you to do the same. I want all of you to take uh, your offering and place it in your hand. If it's your phone, just whatever. to confession later. Father, thank you for your goodness in our lives. And so we come today giving to you because you are the great generous Father who gave your Son. And so it is like you to give, as Raul said. Now I pray a supernatural blessing upon your people, supernatural protection. Keep them multiply the work of their hands and let the world know Jesus. Protect their children and their families. Bless them abundantly for your name's sake in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give the buckets, thank you. If you'd like to give in the buckets, you can come forward. If you'd like to give my text to give, go ahead and do that now. God bless you.
<laughs> oh man. And Bill, Bill, Bill was right. You do have issues. Come on, come on. Give the Lord praise one more time. Go this. You do have issues. Good one. Good issues. You're a bit crazy. You lack passion, though. <laughs> Can I be myself tonight? I love it when people leave during the offering. I love making them leave. I love seeing the scriptures preached and people just not liking it, and so they go. I think it's wonderful. I see that in the leadership of Jesus. He tells them, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, gives them no disclaimer. They all leave, and then he asks the ones who are still there whether or not they're leaving too. Jesus is not insecure. He doesn't need our company to... Uh, believe that he is the Lord. I just want to say off the bat that we're going to preach the truth that here if it's just Jesse and I. <laughs> and I believe you. I believe you. We've got some mountains to climb as a family. And if the Bible teaches the tithe, we are teaching the tithe. If the Bible teaches to do back handsprings uh, during a worship set, we're going to do that. I just want you to know, and offending people is part of the gospel. The cross itself is offensive. And when you're willing to see people offended by the truth of the scripture, you are a free preacher. Now, many of you are visiting from other churches. I want to help your church out very quickly. Your pastor doesn't work for you. Now, if you're on the board, I especially want to tell you that. He doesn't. He doesn't work for you either. He, he works for the Lord himself. May God raise up Bible-preaching Jesus lovers. Bible-preaching Jesus lovers. I've heard it said that if you do receive offerings anymore, people get mad and they won't come back. Well, that's part of church growth. Um, a friend of mine uh, planted a tree in my backyard that hasn't bloomed. <laughs> oh, we can't do this. Sorry, I'm old school. Communion elements. They don't belong on the floor. Say amen. I'm old school. Now I hear them all getting picked up. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> We're on a journey together. <laughs> Don't you sit on them either. It really is so sad how the church treats communion. But we're going to receive communion properly tonight, and miracles are going to happen. You'll see. Uh, so the tree isn't blooming. And I got the tree so it would bloom. You know those trees that look like dogwoods, sort of? They're blooming right now, the big round pink ones? That was supposed to be happening in my yard. It's not happening. It's been like two years since we planted it, and it's just not happening. So I thought to myself, I called my friend, I said, maybe I should prune the tree so that it will bloom. And while this tree doesn't bloom, when you prune it, it actually helps the structure of the tree, but the flowers don't bloom because of pruning. The principle is very powerful. God cannot add to a people unless he prunes them. And he prunes them through the truth of the scriptures, through the clear declaration of who they are. We, I'm just telling you right off the bat, we worship for a long time here. And that's really why you've come. You haven't come because of great preaching. You've come to be in the Lord's presence. And to have consistent presence, you need consistent worship. It's just the way it is. <sighs> but uh, the Word of God is the Word of God. 
and we're just getting started giving. I believe that not only we're we gonna have our building, but it will be completely debt free. And I don't, for the life of me, I don't know why that offends people. I don't know why, and I, I've never really talked about this on a Sunday night, but, but uh, if the Lord doesn't have your money, he doesn't have all of you. So uh, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it all together. And we're going to take a mountain and paint our faces like Braveheart, like I said this morning. And we're all putting our swords on the table. And we're going to go to war for the generations after us. And see God build a house for his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Part of uh, being part of Jesus' image is being ready in season and out of season. Our team loves that. So I'd like Carla. Is Carla here? Where is she? Oh, okay. Ryan, you come up. You come up. Amen. And um, I want us to prepare to receive communion. We're going to take it as a family. As a family. If you could help me, Joel, thank you. This is such a holy time. Sorry, I'll do it later. Yes, I do. Yeah, thanks, baby. Sorry, I was under orders and I forgot, babe. Don't let me leave the service without doing it, baby. You know what? We should do it now. Because once the communion starts, people are going to be getting touched. Say amen. amen. You can stay up here. He's like, should I leave? No, yeah, yeah. Have a seat. The world is your oyster, Ryan. It's all yours, up to half the kingdom. Look, you can have. All right, take your communion, communion elements. How many of you need one? Need, need a pack? Okay. I want to remind you, April the 2nd, Good Friday. If you loved Jesus 20, you are going to love the Good Friday service. There are many churches coming who will be represented and my heart is that this would become an annual gathering of churches. This wouldn't be about Jesus' image. It would be about Jesus. We're going to gather on the cross. We are bringing this cross. And we're going to be gathering at the Apopka Amphitheater. Let's run that video, and then I'll just quickly follow up. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The worst man could offer collided with the best God could offer, the blood of his son, all on the face of Jesus. And that Jesus yielded his life to the Father. He was buried in a tomb and three days later gloriously raised from the dead the blood won I said the blood won All right, so that's April the 2nd, Good Friday at 7 p.m. It is completely free, but you do need to register to attend. So make sure to go to... Wow, goodfriday.tv. That's official. All right, goodfriday.tv. If you're watching, listen, from, a, from around America, and really I know many of you are watching from around the world, but if you're in America and you'd like to come, we want to invite you, especially for those of you who attended Jesus 20. Come on down. There's still some room, so come down here. It's going to be a glorious night. Our choir will be there. By the way, how anointed was the choir last week? My word. This is ridiculous. 
Uh, they'll be there, amazing worship leaders. That's not the most important thing. The Lord himself will be on that field under the night sky, and we're going to worship Jesus, and he's going to move gloriously. So if you'd like to be a part, we'd love to have you April 2nd. Amen? Amen. All right. So go to goodfriday.tv. Carla, now you can come up. I would like Carla and Ryan to lead us in the communion prayer. You'll pray over the, the body. You'll pray over the blood, Carla. Can we thank God for this precious couple that's been sent by the Lord? I want to quickly give you some scripture. You can just grab a seat. All right. What are you laughing at? What's Carla doing? Oh, no, don't go sit down, Carla. Luke twenty two fourteen. Listen. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Isn't it precious that he literally gave his body for us? This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In other words, bring forth before the eyes of your heart all I suffered. Verse 20, likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as, as it has been determined, but woe to that man who, whom has betrayed him. Tonight you hold in your hands, oh, this is powerful the supper of the Lord. And we come, yes, we're sitting in a big building, but, but, but that's not what the Lord sees. We come to his table as a family tonight. That's why I preach the gospel first. We come as a family, believing in the Lord Jesus, as his people, and we come before the body and blood of the Lord. I'd like to do something a little different tonight. If you've come with someone, I would like you to uh, just get together with them right now. We're going to receive communion uh, in groups. If you've come with a group of people, just gather quickly. Just you, And uh, I don't want you to start praying yet, but as, as uh, Ryan and Carla lead in the elements, I want us to receive it in covenant, in agreement, in relationship. So, babe, you're, you're coming with me. Okay. <laughs> I'll actually come down. So if you don't have anyone, if you came alone tonight, um, just ask someone. Say, hey, are you okay if I join you in communion? And if you see someone alone, I want, I want to encourage you to reach out to them. This meal is meant to be taken as the body of Christ. Okay, now, listen very closely. If you are sick in your body, I want you to tell someone in your little group that you need a breakthrough in your body. And I want you all to agree as you receive communion for that miracle as they're leading you in prayer, okay? We come to the table in faith to the one who is our faith. So Ryan, you'll lead the bread. Carla, you'll follow. Let's all break up uh, into those groups. Stay close, by the way. I don't want you crisscrossing. So it has to be near you as they begin praying. Thank you, Jesus. Don't, don't, don't start talking. Just come together. Babe, come. Ryan will lead us in prayer. Jesus, we come to the table tonight as a family. Let him pray. We come to the table tonight as a family, Lord. We lift your body up. Jesus, you said man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of your mouth, you are true food. You are true bread. You are the bread that comes down from heaven. 
Lord, it is, it is an honor to partake of life himself today. You, Jesus, that you said to do this in remembrance of you as often as we do it. Lord, so we remember you tonight. We remember you tonight as a body. We remember you with you, Lord, that you who knew no sin, you became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for divine health, for healing in our bodies, for healing in our bodies, Lord. You are true food. Jesus, we remember you. We remember you, Jesus. We remember the holes in your hands and the holes in your feet, Lord, the crown of thorns that was placed upon your head so that we could be whole, so we could be healed. God, we thank you, Jesus. We will not forget. We will not forget, Jesus. We set you before us tonight. We see you and only you tonight. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are true fruit and true bread. You are life. You are our reason for being. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We hold your body up, you and you alone. There is no other. There is no other. Thank you, Jesus. Let's break the body tonight and take it as a family. We thank you, Jesus, and we receive you tonight. The other day, our three little girls took communion for the first time together. And when our oldest got to the blood, she said, Jesus, thank you that you are good and perfect. What childlike faith to understand that his blood was poured out for us because he is good and perfect. Jesus, we just thank you that every drop of blood that you poured out for us is sufficient, Jesus. Not a single drop was wasted. It was poured out with us in mind, Jesus, so that we can be whole, that our minds can be whole, that our sins can be washed away, Jesus. You did it with us in mind. So we just come together as a family and we thank you. Our hearts cry that, that we just thank you, Jesus, that you poured out your blood for us. We love you, Jesus, and we just thank you. Like my little girl said, that you are good and perfect. You are good and perfect, Jesus. So we just praise you. We worship you. We thank you. Oh. I thank you, Jesus, that, that your blood was poured, man, from the, <laughs> I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now, as your blood was poured down, that you just heal your people, Jesus, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, that it just flow, Jesus. <laughs> We praise you and we worship you. And together we come together as a family and we take your blood. If you need a miracle in your body, just... Offer your body to the Lord right now in faith. Just say, Jesus, here's my body. Heal me. Ryan, would you come, please? Just grab the mic. 
There have been so many miracles taking place. I want to hear about them. Where's Natasha? Natasha, how are you doing? Your taste and smell. Slowly coming back. Uh, can you just tell them what happened last week? She can hold it. She's earned it. Um, so I had COVID back in October, and my smell, my taste and my smell left completely. And then right in December, um, it started coming back, but everything tasted off. Like things just tasted really strange uh, and not normal. And um, last week, um, I got prayer for it and um, I so badly wanted to test it out to see if the Lord had healed me. And the only thing I had to try that I remembered tasted funny was the communion juice. Um, so I, I tried it and it tasted, tasted different. And then, so I wasn't totally sure. So after service, um, I saw that Alex had an apple and that was also something that tasted kind of just really gross. So I tried it and it tasted sweet. I couldn't, it wasn't fully there, but then the next day, um, I went out to eat with somebody, and like it, it's just like slowly coming back. So, wonderful. so wonderful. You know, Natasha's a third year. Had we given her the mic in first year, I'm not so sure she would have spoken so beautifully with such comfort. That was beautiful. Isn't the Lord wonderful? What, um, did somebody, was somebody healed of, a, of an egg allergy? Is that true? Who is that? Who, who was healed? She's not here. What happened? Did, did she try an egg and nothing, nothing happened? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who wants to be allergic to eggs? My word. Not me. Not me. Anybody else have a healing testimony in your own life? Yeah, go over there, Ryan, right there. I want to hear about this. Go. I'm the one that had the 12 heart, I mean, nine oh, heart yeah, attacks, yeah, 12 yeah, I remember you. All right. This morning I tested myself. Well, I tested myself throughout the whole week. I'm a roof inspector for a roofing company. And every time I climb up on a roof, my heart starts like I had 2,000 uh, drummers in my chest. Uh -huh. This whole week I had nothing. This morning I tried again, <laughs> lifting the chairs all morning. Wow. Nothing happened, so. Come on, guys. Come on. God got it. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, right there in the back, Ryan. So, this is kind of embarrassing, but they called out tone deafness at the front. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, um, it's, it's, it's really interesting because as soon as he said it, you know when you're trying to zoom into a picture and it's kind of blurry and then all of a sudden you get focus? Mm -hmm. That's what happened on the right side of my body but with like sound particles. And whew, it was so insane. There was just such clarity and like definition in the sound that I heard. And it's, it's just also wild because on my way to school, I was driving and I was worshiping the Lord and uh -huh. I forgot my speakers. And in my heart, I know that I can't sing or I couldn't before. And in my heart, I said, man, I just, God, maybe I'm just not supposed to worship you this way. Maybe I wasn't made to worship you this way, but I can dance and I can do all these other things. And I said that in my heart. And when I went up to get prayer, he said that's exact, that's the exact thought that he heard in his heart. And that's why he needed to call it out. So it was, it was just so amazing how so specific Jesus is. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Anyone else? Yeah, right here, Jazz. Hello. Hello, Jazz. Um, so this morning, like progressively throughout the day, like I noticed that my throat, not like a sore throat, but I was starting to get like pain in my throat, like maybe my, my voice was just tired or just starting to hurt and not up. Uh -huh. And um, just now during communion, I was like, this is a no bueno. We're not taking this home. And so I took communion. I didn't necessarily. Did you say no bueno? Yeah, no bueno. It's a done deal. It's good Spanish. Um, You're getting <laughs> I didn't necessarily feel anything, but just by faith, remembering what he, what he did for me, I yes. was like, this is done. And it was even hard for me to like scream when you would say like, give the Lord praise throughout service today, throughout worship. I would, I couldn't scream because it would hurt, but I was just screaming just now and no pain, like zero, zero Pain's pain. gone. Wow, wow. Zero. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, sometimes you have to hate sickness enough to just refuse it. Why should we accept something that Jesus hates? Hey, Amen. Let's keep taking these. This is powerful. Right there in the back, Ryan. Look at that beard. Wow. All right, so last week we, um, we attended Calvary in Ormond. Yeah. And so we had attended, we went home, we were going to do some things, and uh, we, my wife found out that John was here worshiping. Yep. So she had it on. I said, what are you listening to? She goes, well, John's over at Jesus Image. I said, well, let's, let's watch it on the TV. So she puts it on her TV, and we notice Bill Johnson's here. Uh -huh. And um, I had taken a class, the Supernatural class. So I'm like, well, let's watch this. So we sat down. And at the end, when you guys did an altar call, right. so I stood up because I had, I, I had no voice. So you stood up in your house? In my home. In your hotel room? Or? No, in my home. Okay. In my home. Because we live here in uh, Palm Got Coast. It. Got it. Um, I had no voice. I couldn't talk. It started Saturday night. Sunday, I had no voice. Um, my wife and my daughter laid hands. <laughs> I had a lump in my throat. The lump went away. You had a physical lump? Lump in my throat. Wow. I came home from work Monday, full voice. Wow. So, one second. Uh, so, did you, um, you could physically feel the lump in your throat? Absolutely. It was and, on the right side of my throat. And, and when I, they prayed, it left. When they prayed, the lump was gone. I, I could swallow. So you easily. were just watching online and got healed. Amen. If you're watching online tonight, the Lord will heal you too. Yeah. He will heal you too. He loves you. In fact, uh, I feel this. In fact, uh, everybody stretch your hands towards the camera by faith. If you're watching tonight, you feel forgotten and possibly you feel that nobody sees your sickness or that God is put off by your sickness and he's forgotten about you. When the leper came to Jesus, the Bible says he reached out and touched him and then prayed. So excited and willing was Jesus to touch the man that his hand touched him before he prayed. And he said, I am willing, be thou cleansed. So right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we stretch our hands in faith to everyone watching around the world. And as this man was healed, we declare that he, the Lord is not a respecter of persons. And that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. The Lord rebuke every sickness under the sound of our voices. Every tumor, every cyst, cloudy vision, glaucoma, lumps, go now in Jesus' name. Blockage in the arteries, go now in the name of Jesus. Depression, people who are bound by devils right now, be free. We rebuke every spirit that's come upon you, every spirit of affliction, behold, every sickness bows its knee to King Jesus right now. And we declare as the church that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. I want to say that together, church. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Again, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You are healed. This is a little different, but it's the Lord. I feel the Lord. Now, as the Lord begins to touch you there in your homes, 
I want you to begin commenting on the feet. If you feel the power of God, say that. I feel the power of God on my body. Maybe you feel heat. Maybe you feel a tingling. Maybe you feel like an electricity. Maybe you feel nothing at all. But the symptoms are gone. Right now I want you to post that. I want you to declare what the Lord is doing. And that is contagious by nature. I'm telling you. You start doing that, the healing power of God will begin to flow. Begin to flow. I just want the power of God to come on me. Is there someone here who has pain or who suffered with pain, like tension pain or headaches in the back of your head, right at the bottom of your head? Right? Okay. I want you to, if, if that's you, I want you to just keep your hand up. I want the person next to you to put uh, their hand on you right now, on their shoulder. If you're okay with it, just say, I'm fine with it. You can touch my shoulder. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, loose, loose, loose that grip. Loose that grip. It leaves now in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. The blood is against you, sickness. Leave now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I feel the power of God right here. Right now. I do. I feel the power of God right now. Lord, heal every sickness in the room. Every sickness in the room. Oh, there's a wonderful power of the Holy Spirit right now. I just felt the Lord just come on, come on me right, right here. I felt the power of God come on me. Just receive your healing. You don't need to beg. You just say, Jesus, I receive it, and then do something. Do something. Activate that faith. Just do something. If you need to stand up and test your body, stand up. Do it. If it's your legs, get up. Move them. Get into the aisle. Do whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do. If it's your neck, you move, move your neck, whatever that was. If it's an infection, some of you have been suffering with infection. I've had an issue with my ear. And while we were worshiping, I'm telling you, I felt, I physically felt my ear blow open. All day I struggled today to rest between services. I, I had a, just a really difficult time, and it was ringing for a while, and then my ear just opened. Right there in worship, I'm telling you, in this atmosphere, anything is possible. Remember what Jesus said? It's more difficult for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get saved. And then his disciples said, well, who's going to be saved? And she said, you don't get it. With man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. Anything is possible here because Jesus is here right now. Because Jesus is here right now. Every tumor. If you have a tumor on your body like a little child, I just want you to put your hand on it. Just, just, just put that on your body if you have a cyst or a growth or whatever. As the Lord healed that man, the lump in his throat, he can dissolve the tumor. And I'm telling you, I have seen, I was at Bethel, Cleveland for 45 minutes. We took healing testimonies. I was there ministering. I would say 70% of the healings were tumors that either disappeared or shrunk for 40 minutes or cysts. So right now, just close your eyes where you are. Put your hand there on your body. Father, you are the wonder-working God. Heal your people. Heal your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to take a few more testimonies. Oh, what happened here? Well, you know what? Before you take, before you, you share the testimony... Come, come here. The fire of the Holy Spirit come upon her. The fire of the Holy Spirit come upon her. I'm sick of hitting the brakes. It's been months. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it. Uh, pick her up. Put her right there on the chair. Ryan, I'll need you here. What happened? Uh, I ha struggled with really, really bad hip joint pain for like a year, over a year now. Uh -huh. And like any time I'd be walking a lot or in worship or I'd be serving, standing a lot, it would hurt. And you've been really serving a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. A lot you've been serving. You've been amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And I have been praying over my hip like 
every single service, every communion, just standing in faith. And this worship set, I heard the Lord say, today's the day, I'm going to heal you. I literally heard him say that. You heard that. And, and I like said to the Lord, I believe you, I believe you. And then we took communion and I didn't feel anything. And then we were praying over the, the live stream. And then you said, just receive it. And I opened my hands and Gina put her hand on my hip. And I said, Lord, I receive it. And then you said, activate it with faith. And I stood up and I felt the power of God all over my body. And I felt no pain Come in on. my hip. You have no pain? All right. Thank you. Lord. So, uh, you yeah, can sit down, just sit down. Uh, if you stood, would it have hurt before? Okay, do that. Any pain? No pain. None. How long has that been? For over a year. Over a year? Over a year. I have every day. Every day, yeah. And you're completely I pain I feel free. no pain. You Literally feel no pain. pain. Come on. Feel pain. The Lord, the Lord, it's certainly not me. Certainly not me. I didn't even pray for her. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, we've got one in the back. One in the back there. Willie. Um, Go my ahead, name is, Willie. My name is Willie. Um, uh, a few weeks ago before I was uh, saved, I had a pain in my back. And I, it came to me work. I used to live a lot of pallets. And it hurt my back real bad. And, and in the morning time, I get up, I couldn't even, I had to, I had to bend over, I couldn't straighten my back up. It's so much sharp pain. And it hurt so it hurt so bad. It took me a while to get my back right. But when, when someone prayed for me from here, uh, asked them, they prayed for me. And since then, I just can't believe my, my pain went away. It's Wait, gone. today they prayed yeah, for you? It just, it, I was in the park. I'm the same one. I was in the, and my pain gone, and I had a, a, a pain, in, a sharp pain in my hip. And since I've been coming here, it disappeared. And I don't know where it went, it just vanished. <laughs> oh. Jordan, lift your hands to the Lord. The Lord uh, highlighted you to me today. Morning service. Father, let your fire come upon this precious, precious girl. And raise her up. Raise her up. Let the authority of the Spirit flow through her. Give her words of life. Teach her to break the scriptures and share the words of life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Who's hungry? I would ask the Lord to touch you tonight. I would ask. I didn't even want to do anything tonight. I was tired. But how many of you know when we're weak, he's made strong? The Lord can handle a meeting. Now lift your hands, Colby. Father, let your fire come upon him. Now I declare your perfect destiny for him. In the name of Jesus. Bring him over here. Get down on your knees, buddy. Behold, I make all things new. All things new. Let your fire burn him up and take him back to the earliest days. The earliest days when things were simple and clear, filled with the love of Jesus. Let your fire come on him. Who else was healed? Yeah? You're excited about it too. I like that. Her. Yeah. He's like her. She was. 
I got it. I said, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> what happened? Um, so I've been having respiratory problems for quite some time now, but it bothered me more this one um, week when I was uh, playing the drums for my youth group, and I was. Where having, do you live? I live here in Orlando. Okay. And I was having such a difficult time breathing, and I'm like, God, like I, I just want to worship you, and and it was just getting in the way, and it was bothering me so much, and I'm like, enough is enough, and so on uh, <laughs> this Sunday when they were praying over healing and it was over respiratory issues, I stood up and then the pastor said, you have to put it into action. But I'm like, I can't really put it into action like that. Like it kind of just, you know, comes and goes. And then when I went to go to sleep um, that same night, I felt such like this pressure on my chest and I was going by faith. I'm like, no, like God, I'm healed. And I was going by faith and then I felt this pressure and I knew it was doubt trying to creep in and tell me that I wasn't healed, but I wasn't having issues breathing. It was just this pressure. And the next morning, like, my chest was sore, but I could still breathe. And I'm like, all right, no, the enemy's not going to get to my head. I'm, I'm believing in faith. And then, but just this whole week, I've been feeling such a spiritual attack because my faith in Jesus has been growing so much. And so on Wednesday, it got to the point where, like, before I went to sleep, I was feeling this, like, evil presence in my room trying to stir something, you know, it just fill my my head with doubt. And I'm like, no, Jesus. And I was praying for my room. I'm like, this room is yours. My house is yours. My heart, my life is yours. And then I fell asleep. But there was that pressure again tightening around my chest. And I'm like, God, no, like, I'm healed. Like, I'm tired of this. And I woke up unable to breathe. And, this and was Thursday? This was uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Wednesday. And then when did the Lord heal you? And so, yeah. And so I woke up unable to breathe and I went back to sleep. And I'm like, no. So I went to my sister and I said, can you pray with me? Because I just could not fall asleep in my room. And she prayed with me. And then I fell asleep. And I fell asleep so soundly, and I knew that it was a spiritual battle because after I went into prayer with my sister, it went away. It went away, and I know that I'm healed, and I know I just need to live my faith. How old are you? Faith. 19. And then and you play the drums? Yes. At, 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 at your youth group? Yes. What youth group? Um, it's for Sea Life Orlando Wildfire. Yeah. Come here. Come here real quick. Come, come get on your knees here. Come get on your knees here. Father, in Jesus' name, you need a, a true touch of the Holy Spirit. Father, stretch your hands, everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus. What's your name? Lord, I pray for Paula. And I ask you to clothe her in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I plead the blood of Jesus over her, over her mind, and claim her for the kingdom. Say this, Paula, Jesus, my life is fully yours. You are the Lord of my life forever. I give myself to you. Say, give me the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, I come into agreement. No, 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 you just receive now. Father, I come into agreement. Clothe her in the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let her know your touch and your presence and change her life forever tonight. In Jesus' name, clothe her. Who else was healed? Right here. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Um, I sprained my, my wrist yesterday working out, and it was just like really, oh, so, sorry. Um, it was just really, really bad. And um, Jocelyn prayed for me during communion, and the Lord completely just took all the tension all away. All the pain's gone? All the pain's gone. Are you moving around? Yeah. Perfect. I was checking it, like Thank putting you, weight Lord. on it on the floor, like, yeah. It's Thank all gone. You, Lord. Anybody getting bored watching the Lord touch his people? Okay. Uh, who, who else? Who else was here? Yeah, right here. Hope. You have cool hair, Hope. 
Um, so every, from as long as I can remember, um, every time I get encountered by the Lord and I'm crying profusely, I'd always get chronic migraines, like every time, like without a doubt. And it would almost like hurt because I'd be with the Lord and then I'd be like, Lord, like I don't want to get a headache because I don't want to you know, cry for long periods of time. And so last week when they called out chronic migraines, I just really believe that, you know, I stood in faith that I wouldn't have any more chronic migraines. And tonight, you know, the Lord came just so beautifully. Um, And um, I was able to just be fully with him and without having a migraine, like I'm completely pain free. Wow. Hope, I want you to come. I want you to come forward. I want you to pick up those keys. I want to tell you how much we love you and how proud we are of you. Come, come down here. Babe, can you move that stuff? And, and I want you to sit there next to Jess. I want to pray for you. Father, come on. I stretch your hands towards hope. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit and that you would clothe her in power, that you would mark her forever tonight. She would mark her forever tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everyone just pray in the spirit here for a minute. Mark Floyd Beth in the name of Jesus. Mark her in the name of Jesus. Come here, Najina. Sit right here for a second. Holy, 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 holy. Mark all these children. Mark the children. Fill her again. Fill them. 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 Fill them, fill them. Come on, refuse to leave the same way you came in. Fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad Jesus saves good wine for last. I'm so glad. Thank you, Father. Fill them. Fill them, fill them. Fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them again with the joy of their salvation. Fill them. Fill them, fill them. Fill, fill them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Is there someone here with irritable bowel syndrome? Anyone? Wave your hand if you're here with that. You have a... Somebody's pointing. Where is that? <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, if you have it, just wave like this. There you go. Okay. If you're next to them, put your hand on them right now. We are in, we are on holy ground. And this is where miracles happen. Jesus, we come to you. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon them and heal this irritable bowel syndrome. In the name of Jesus. Heal them. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. In Jesus' name. Let them become aware of your presence, Lord. Aware of your touch and your healing power. In Jesus' name. Now, to those we prayed for, I've no, I, I'm no, I don't know much about that condition. 
what, what would need to happen for you to know that the Lord had touched you? Would you need to go eat, or what, what would need to take place? Well, stand up. Sorry. Um, it's, re it's really random. Um, it's really random because it flares up. Okay. But it also has a lot to do with just in general gas your gas your. So would you have a way of knowing by next week? Stomach. Well, yes. I mean, it just it flares. Like when I was 21, I had 23 ulcers in my colon. Wow. I'm supposed to do um, colonoscopies every six months because I'm prone to cancer and Crohn's disease because of that. For 15 years, I gave my life to the Lord. I mean. I was a leader of the pr prayer meetings um, through OHOP, mm -hmm. and um, I never had flare-ups again. I got married four years ago, and um, it's been a huge attack on my life, even though I met him at church, and he's a man of God, and I know that God is going to encounter him with what he's dealing with as a man, and it has to do a lot with your message today, and I gave her the testimony that the Lord put in my heart that I need to email him your message from today. So, how consistent has your pain been? It's been for the last four years because of stress. Like is it daily? It's a stressful condition. Okay. That's basically what they told me. My Stretch gosh. your hands, guys. I want to do the, the right thing here. Father, I thank you in advance for these two people. I thank you for the testimonies that will come in by faith. They will hear of these breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you all stand to your feet? Can we give the Lord praise for all he's done tonight? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Don't tip him. Don't tip him. Give him something. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Can we throw that slide up there, Carla? Guys, we have raised $190,000 for the audio equipment. And the Lord has brought it in. Now listen, listen to me. I said earlier, we're going to have to do this together. We're just not in the place as a church where we're going to sit by and watch other people pay a price for a breakthrough. We all need to get in on this. So if you'd like to give, look, we've got to raise so another 125, 130,000, I guess, somewhere in there. Or one, yeah, 125. That's what we need to get to. And the Lord has brought this in the last three weeks. This is amazing. It's a miracle. So I'm asking, uh, look, we all need to do something. Jesse and I are doing something. Let's get this done. There's no reason we should be in debt for the Sunday morning equipment. We had to purchase it in advance, but we need to pay this thing off and get through it, okay? So if you're watching online and you'd like to do something, I want to invite you to do that. You can text morning to 321. No, no, okay, fine. If you're here, whatever, just, just, we have all these numbers. Just text, give, or mourning to something. It should be pretty clear. But let's just believe God. Look, look, we're never going to purchase multi-million dollar buildings if we can't get through this hurdle, and we're going through it together as one family. Let's see this paid off in Jesus' name, okay? Father, I thank you for this wonderful, wonderful night. I pray you'd bless your people in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen. See you next Sunday morning. But he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The worst man could offer collided with the best God could offer, the blood of his son, all on the face of Jesus. And that Jesus yielded his life to the Father. He was buried in a tomb, and three days later, gloriously raised from the dead. The blood won. I said the blood won.
God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip and with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming they're going to be teaching instruments, they're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us, we worship for Him. So we want to invite you to come, come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School, has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. That Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us.